Historicism, a method of interpretation of biblical prophecies, associates symbols with historical persons, nations or events. It can result in a view of progressive and continuous fulfillment of prophecy covering the period from biblical times to the Second Coming. Almost all Protestant reformers from the Reformation into the 19th century held historicist views. The main primary texts of interest to Christian historicists include apocalyptic literature, such as the Book of Daniel and the Book of Revelation. Commentators have also applied historicist methods to ancient Jewish history, to the Roman Empire, to Islam, to the papacy, to the modern era, and to the end time. Overview Historicists claim that prophetic interpretation reveals the entire course of history of the Church from the writing of the Book of Daniel, some centuries before the close of the first century, to the end of time. Historicist interpretations have been criticized for inconsistencies, conjectures, and speculations. There is no agreement about various outlines of Church history. Historicist readings of the Book of Revelation have been revised as new events occur and new figures emerge on the world scene. Historicism was the belief held by the majority of the Protestant reformers, including Martin Luther, John Calvin, Thomas Cranmer, and others including John Thomas, John Knox, and Cotton Mather. The Catholic Church tried to counter it with preterism and futurism during the Counter Reformation. This alternate view served to bolster the Catholic Church position against attacks by Protestants, and is viewed as a Catholic defense against the Protestant historicist view which identified the Roman Catholic Church as a persecuting apostasy and the Pope with the Antichrist. One of the most influential aspects of the Protestant historicist paradigm was the speculation that the Pope could be Antichrist. Martin Luther wrote this view, which was not novel, into the Smallcalled Articles of 1537. It was then widely popularized in the 16th century, via sermons and drama, books and broadside publication. Jesuit commentators developed alternate approaches that would later become known as preterism and futurism, and applied them to apocalyptic literature. Francisco Ribera developed a form of futurism, 1590, and Luis de Alcazar a form of preterism. At the same period, the historicist approach has been used in attempts to predict the date of the end of the world. An example in post-Reformation Britain is in the works of Charles Wesley, who predicted that the end of the world would occur in 1794, based on his analysis of the Book of Revelation. Adam Clark, whose commentary was published in 1831, proposed a possible date of 2015 for the end of the papal power. In 19th century America, William Miller proposed that the end of the world would occur on October 22, 1844, based on a historicist model used with Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. Miller's historicist approach to the book of Daniel spawned a national movement in the United States known as Millerism. After the Great Disappointment some of the Millerites eventually organized the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which continues to maintain a historicist reading of biblical prophecy as essential to its eschatology. Millerites also formed other Adventist bodies, including the one that spawned the Watch Tower movement, better known as Jehovah's Witnesses, who hold to their own unique historicist interpretations of Bible prophecy. Topic. History of historicist interpretations of Daniel Topic. Topic. Early interpretations Topic. Prophetic commentaries in the early church usually interpreted individual passages rather than entire books. The earliest complete commentary on the Book of Revelation was carried out by Victorinus of Peto, considered to be one of the earliest historicist commentators, around 300 AD. Edward Bishop Eliot, a proponent of the historicist interpretation, wrote that it was modified and developed by the expositions of Andreas, Primasius both 6th century, Bede 730 AD, Anspert, Arethas, Hamo of Auxerre, and Berengades all of the 9th century. The 10th-century Catholic bishop Arnulf of Orléans was, according to Eliot, the first to apply the man of sin prophecy in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3-9 to the papacy. Joachim of Flores gave the same interpretation in 1190, and the Archbishop Eberhard II, Archbishop of Salzburg, Eberhard II, in 1240. 
Topic: Protestant. Topic: Protestant reformers had a major interest in historicism with a direct application to their struggle against the papacy. Prominent leaders and scholars among them, including Martin Luther, John Calvin, Thomas Cranmer, John Thomas, John Knox, and Cotton Mather, identified the Roman papacy as the Antichrist. The Centuriators of Magdeburg, a group of Lutheran scholars in Magdeburg headed by Matthias Flacius, wrote the twelve-volume, Magdeburg Centuries, to discredit the papacy and identify the Pope as the Antichrist. The fifth round of talks in the Lutheran-Roman Catholic Dialogue notes, In calling the Pope the Antichrist. The early Lutherans stood in a tradition that reached back into the 11th century. Not only dissidents and heretics but even saints had called the Bishop of Rome the Antichrist when they wished to castigate his abuse of power. William Tyndale, an English Protestant reformer, held that while the Roman Catholic realms of that age were the empire of Antichrist, any religious organization that distorted the doctrine of the Old and New Testaments also showed the work of Antichrist. In his treatise The Parable of the Wicked Mammon, he expressly rejected the established church teaching that looked to the future for an antichrist to rise up, and he taught that antichrist is a present spiritual force that will be with us until the end of the age under different religious disguises from time to time. Tyndall's translation of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, concerning the man of lawlessness, reflected his understanding, but was significantly amended by later revisers, including the King James Bible Committee, which followed the Vulgate more closely. Rather than expecting a single Antichrist to rule the earth during a future tribulation period, Luther, John Calvin and other Protestant reformers saw the Antichrist as a present feature in the world of their time, fulfilled in the papacy. Debated features of the Reformation historicist interpretations were the identification of the Antichrist, 1 and 2 John, the beasts of Revelation chapter 13, the man of sin or man of lawlessness in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the little horn of Daniel 7 and 8, and the whore of Babylon, Revelation chapter 17. Isaac Newton S. Religious views on the historicist approach are in the work published in 1733, after his death, Observations upon the Prophecies of the Book of Daniel, and the Apocalypse of St. John. It took a stance toward the papacy similar to that of the early Protestant reformers. He avoided predictions based on prophetic literature, taking the view that prophesy when it has been shown to be fulfilled will be proof that God S. Providence has been imminently active in the world. This work regarded much prophesy as already fulfilled in the first millennium of the Christian era. <laughs> Modern The 19th century was a significant watershed in the history of prophetic thought. While the historicist paradigm, together with its pre- or post-millennialism, the day-year principle, and the view of the papal antichrist, was dominant in English Protestant scholarship during much of the period from the Reformation to the middle of the 19th century and continues to find expression in some groups today, it now was not the only one. Arising in Great Britain and Scotland, William Kelly and other Plymouth Brethren became the leading exponents of dispensationalist premillennial eschatology. By 1826, literalist interpretation of prophecy took hold and dispensationalism saw the light of day. The dispensationalist interpretation differed from the historicist model of interpreting Daniel and Revelation in picking up the Catholic theory that there was a gap in prophetic fulfillment of prophecy proposed by futurism, but dispensationalism claim it was an anti-Catholic position. Topic: <laughs> Historicist views. Topic. Topic. Daniel. Topic. Topic. Visions of Daniel. Topic. Traditional Protestant historicism interprets the four kingdoms in the Book of Daniel as Neo-Babylon, Medo-Persia c. 550–330 BC, Greece under Alexander the Great, and the Roman Empire. Additionally, historicists view the little horn 
In Daniel chapter 7 verse 8 and Daniel chapter 8 verse 9 is the papacy, Adam Clark, writing in 1825, offered an alternative 1260-year period from 755 AD to 2015, based upon the Pope's elevation from being a subject of the Byzantine Empire to becoming the independent head of the Papal States by means of the donation of Pepin. Topic. Prophecy of Seventy Weeks Topic. The vision of the Seventy Weeks is interpreted as dealing with the Jewish nation from about the middle of the 5th century BCE until not long after the death of Jesus in the 1st century CE and so is not concerned with current or future history. Historicists consider Antiochus IV Epiphanes irrelevant to the fulfillment of the prophecy. The historicist view on the prophecy of 70 weeks, in Daniel 9, stretches from 457 BCE to 34 CE, and that the final week of the prophecy refers to the events of Jesus Christ's ministry. This was the view taught by Martin Luther, John Calvin and Sir Isaac Newton. This interpretation of Daniel chapter 9 presents the 490 years as an uninterrupted period. Like others before them they equate the beginning of the seventy weeks from the time the word goes out to rebuild and restore Jerusalem, of Daniel chapter 9 verse 25 with the decree by Artaxerxes I in 458 sevenths BCE which provided money for rebuilding the temple and Jerusalem and allowed for restoration of a Jewish administration. It ends three and a half years after the crucifixion. The appearance of Messiah the Prince at the end of the 69 weeks 483 years is aligned with Jesus' baptism in 27 CE, in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. The cutting off of the anointed one refers to the crucifixion three and a half years after the end of the 483 years, bringing atonement for iniquity and everlasting righteousness. Jesus is said to confirm the covenant between God and humankind by his death on the cross in the spring about Passover time of 31 CE, in the midst of the last seven years. At the moment of his death the four-inch thick curtain between the holy and most holy places in the temple ripped from top to bottom marking the end of the temple's sacrificial system. The last week ends three and a half years after the crucifixion i.e., in 34 CE when the gospel was redirected from only the Jews to all Gentile nations. Jehovah's Witnesses have a similar interpretation, but place the period from 455 BCE to 29 CE, with the final week. Being fulfilled by 36 CE some of the representative voices among exegetes of the last 150 years are E. W. Hengstenberg, J. N. Andrews, E. B. Pusey, J. Roska, J. Hondheim, Bootflower, Uriah Smith, and O. Gerhardt. <laughs> Matthew Great Tribulation Most historicists see Matthew's reference to Great Tribulation, Matthew chapter 24 verse 29, as parallel to Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 to 13, having an end when Christ returns. Some historians believe that the tribulation refers to the sufferings of the Jewish people down through the centuries of their dispersion among the Gentile nations. Some historicists believe that the tribulation refers to the centuries of persecution endured by the church and point to the following in the rest of the New Testament, which shows the tribulation. That almost every reference applies to what true Christians go through, rather than what they escape from. John chapter 16 verse 33 Jesus Christ said to his followers, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. 2 Thessalonians 1-4 Paul wrote of the many persecutions and tribulations, which the churches of God were enduring in the first century Christians were thrown to the lions in the Colosseum, eaten by wild dogs, burned at the stake and lit up as torches in Nero's garden. Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 God's final people came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They did not escape it, but endured through it, being purified. This gives clear biblical evidence that Christians have always gone through tribulation and will endure tribulations until the end. 
This view is also called classical post-tribulationism, an original theory of the post-tribulation rapture view which holds the position that the Church has always been in the tribulation because, during its entire existence, it has always suffered persecution and trouble. They believe that the tribulation is not a literal future event. Historicists have also applied the tribulation to the period known as persecution of the saints, as related to Daniel 7 and Revelation chapter 13. Topic. Revelation Topic. Topic. Proponents Topic. Topic. See also Topic. Anti Catholicism, Biblical criticism, British Israelism Christian eschatological views Great apostasy Historical criticism New historicism Shepherd's Rod Topic. References Topic. Topic. Bibliography Topic. Einatten, Joris Van 2003, Liberty and Concord in the United Provinces, Religious Toleration and the Public in the 18th Century Netherlands, Leiden, Brill, ISBN 978-90-04-12843-9 Froome, Leroy Edwin 1946, Part 1, Colonial and Early National American Exposition, Part 2, Old World 19th Century Advent Awakening, The Prophetic Faith of Our Fathers, The Historical Development of Prophetic Interpretation, 3, The Review and Herald Publishing Association. Froome, Leroy Edwin 1950, Early Church Exposition, Subsequent Deflections, and Medieval Revival, The Prophetic Faith of Our Fathers, The Historical Development of Prophetic Interpretation, 1, The Review and Herald Publishing Association. Holbrook, Frank B. 1983, what Prophecy Means to This Church, Adventist Ministry. Lee, Francis Nigel, The Non-Preterist Historicalism of John Calvin and the Westminster Standards, archived from the original on 9 October 2006. Newport, Kenneth G. C. 2000, Apocalypse and Millennium, Studies in Biblical Eisegesis 1 ed., Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0-521-77334-8. Nicol, Francis D. 1980, Bible Commentary, SDA. Topic. External links Topic. Brug, John, A Scriptural and Historical Survey of the Doctrine of the Antichrist PDF, WLS Essays, archived from the original PDF on 4 June 2012 A Confessional Lutheran Perspective McCarter, Parnell, Lee, Francis Nigel, Historicism Research Foundation, Queensland Presbyterian Theological College. Pauline, John. The End of Historicism? Reflections on the Adventist Approach to Biblical Apocalyptic Part 1. PDF, Journal of the Adventist Theological Society, Part 2 Supportive.